Imagine yourself surrounded by a rolling sea of grass, towering over your head as far as the eye can see. You breathe in the densely scented expanse in awe of its power and beauty. This is the tall grass prairie, a part of Illinois' rich natural heritage. It took thousands of years to develop, a gift from the last glaciers and indigenous people who managed and created the landscape of our prairie state. It nurtured and sustained Native Americans and the bison, the largest land mammal in America, and produced the richest farmland in the Midwest. It evolved, creating an ecosystem of amazing biodiversity. We have yet to unlock its secrets and the many ecosystem services, these benefits to humanity that it provides. We are stewards of this rare ecosystem. Less than 1% survived in Illinois. We are its caretakers and in caring for it so that generations to come can benefit from its resources, we must learn about it, protect it, and educate others in restoring it. Let's begin our stewardship journey by learning to identify some of its grasses and forbs. Today, we will identify 12 common prairie plants that you might find in your quadrat. First of three grasses is big blue stem. The seed head resembles a turkey's foot with three parts. Big blue stem grows four to seven feet tall with a green stem often turning to a reddish blue during the growing season. The base of the stem is flattened with hairs. Where the grass leaf connects to the stem is a bluish joint called the node. If no seed head is present, the node can be used to help with identification by pulling back the leaf blade and revealing a stiff, ragged topped membrane called the ligule surrounded by hairs. Our second grass is Indian grass, which grows two to six feet tall. The seed head resembles a yellowish feather from four to 12 inches long. The stem is smooth, the base is flattened and has hairs. The distinct pointed node has golden hair and a stiff notch ligule. The third grass is switchgrass, which grows three to six feet tall with green to purplish stems. The base is round. The seed head has tiny seeds, maybe six to 20 inches wide, and resembles an exploding firework. There is a tuft of dense hair on the upper surface of the leaf at the node. The ligule is surrounded by a V-shaped notch. Wild bergamot is the first of the forbs we will identify. It grows two to three feet and has a one and a half inch tubular lavender flower head. The scented leaves are opposite, serrated, and lance-like. The stem is square. Rattlesnake Master grows two to five feet high with round greenish white prickly flower heads one half to one inch in diameter, turning brown in the fall. Leaves are stiff, bluish green, one and a half inches wide and have soft prickly edges resembling a cactus. Mountain mint grows two to three feet tall with dense clusters of white button-like one quarter inch flowers. The stem is square and multi-branched. Mountain mint leaves are opposite, 
narrow, less than one half inch, and lance-shaped. All parts of the plant give off a mint scent when crushed. Tall Coreopsis grows three to eight feet tall with yellowish daisy-like flowers and purplish brown centers. The distinctive leaves are in three parts, lance-shaped and opposite. Tall goldenrod grows to three feet with plume-like branching clusters of yellow flowers. Close attention should be paid to the leaves, which are three-veined, lance-shaped, opposite, and covered with tiny hairs. Stiff goldenrod grows to four feet with flat top discs of yellow flowers, two or more inches wide. Stems are hairy, leaves are alternate with upper leaves being small, oval, and directly attached, while lower leaves are large, rough, and long stemmed. Rosin weed grows two to four feet with clusters of sunflower-like flowers. Leaves are ovate, stalkless, opposite, and rough like sandpaper. Compass plant grows three to nine feet, has clusters three inches to four inches, of sunflower-like blooms that resemble rosin weed and climb the main stem. Leaves are at the bottom and are very large, indented, stiff, rough, alternate, and often point north and south. Yellow cream gentian grows two to three feet tall with yellow or cream colored bottle-like flowers growing atop opposite waxy lance-shaped leaves that are directly attached to the smooth stem. Your plot will not contain all of these plants but some are sure to show up for you to identify. Today we will learn how to do a quadrat, a tool we use to sample the population of plants in a one meter square of a habitat. Randomly select an area to study. Carefully unfold the frame to make a square. Lift the frame over the plants and set it down, disturbing the plants as little as possible. Position one person on each side of the square. Work the frame down to the ground by easing plants in or out of the square, depending on where they are rooted. Stay outside of the frame so as not to damage the plants you want to survey. Select one team member to be the recorder. Using identification guides provided, identify all the plants in the quadrat. Begin with the tallest and work down to the ground. The next step is to count the plants. To do this, it is necessary to see how the plant is growing out of the ground. Plants like this compass plant with a single stem count as one plant even though it has many large leaves. Plants like this mountain mint may have multiple stems, but still are counted as one plant. Grasses are counted as individual plants. Find an area that has an average density of one grass species. Each team member counts the number of that species in front of them. 
add those numbers together and record the result in the column labeled with the number symbol. Continue counting the number of plants for all the plants you identified. Determine how much area of the quadrat is covered by one plant species as looked at from a standing position. Use the 1% square or your fist to estimate what 1% looks like. Placing your fist or the 1% square over that area, count the number of plants covered by your fist or the 1% square. Note this number in the margin next to the grass name on your data sheet. Each plant member will count the number of fist size areas on that grass in front of them. Add the number of fist size areas and multiply that by the number of grass plants noted in the margin. The recorder selects one plant species at a time to be counted. Record that number in the column labeled percent cover. Do not include the percent symbol. Continue determining the percent cover for all the plant species you identified. Record data only for the plants you have identified in your quadrat. Use whole numbers. The number of plants found and the percent cover may be the same, but often they are different. Total percent cover may be greater than 100% when plants are growing under each other. Total percent cover may be less than 100% if there is bare ground in the quadrat. Have your docent approve and initial the data sheet before you pick up your equipment.